so hello everyone let me know in the chat do you see and hear well maybe this is again maybe the wrong microphone so that's what i'm asking uh, i need to check this so can you see and hear okay if the microphone is very bad let me know i will change it what's the status okay it seems like working great 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 oh I just realized that i did not change the camera okay so i'm here so you did not see me before anyways so <clears throat> okay so today uh, i will add now here to this these show notes as well and also 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 in the chat probably the template the template will be just basically the the code that i finished last time but we will do new things so here is the template uh, in both uh, description and also here in the chat but so today we're going to talk about uh, relational uh, datab databases some of the key features regarding the sql uh, the uh, databases right <clears throat> so uh yeah structured query language so here uh let me see before but before we start i just want to go over some of the homeworks that we received and let's see who is who has the best homework this time so first of all i just realized that uh, some people who try to uh try to submit the the do the work like Christiana worked on Windows and on Windows there are some serious issues of trying to install npm modules so basically for me it's quite easy actually so if I'm uh, so but in, in, instead for Windows it might be necessary that you need to install something like Visual Studio or C++ tools and other things so if if I think Everts is also experienced on on the windows machines uh, or maybe also rocket and <coughs> zaf so so you can um, you can maybe add, give some advice in the uh, telegram as well so here uh, if i go just to some of the homeworks that i got so here i got homework from everts <coughs> okay what is this okay cd nine everts <coughs> Yeah, so uh, probably you didn't have problems because you already have installed some of the developer tools. If you would use it on raw machine, so it seems like there are something required, required in order to install anything. Yeah, so Linux is much easier, uh, but, uh, but yeah, if, if anyone can give some advice how to uh, install this, this everything to the Linux, for to Windows, that would be great because this command which I just run so I just go, went into Everts homework and just run the npm i which means install modules from the package JSON and it installed everything without any problems because there's really very little module modules right right if you look here there are just a few modules that's it so but for some reason on Windows machines without like developer tools installed it just doesn't work there are all sorts of errors that uh, that christiana reported so if anyone have ever uh, dealt with with these kind of windows errors for installing basic modules then maybe you can help out a little bit because i i, I, I have not worked on windows machines for a while uh, but uh, yeah so i cannot comment on that very well we just need maybe you need to install visual studio for that so uh, this is this part so let's look at whatever it's produced so actually to make sure that you understand what was necessary to produce i will share quickly on the jamboard the task oh where is it okay and then we will check the results so the task was to <clears throat> um, to implement a few features and those were 
uh, username, if it already exists in database, update insert of insert, instead of inserting new uh, row or record in the field, make sure that modified field also gets updated. Then add column is deleted to have a soft delete instead of just deleting directly records. And finally, implement connection with the uh, Space Invaders game using Axios. So let's see what we have here. So doing those commands probably will help also others. Uh, so we have this part. Mm -hmm. So this is insert score. So select some score from where player name is something and this is the name parameters which is great because if I would just write here plus something string it would be uh, dangerous it would be possible to do SQL injections so here there are a few things interesting so first of all uh, let me just uh, comment on those uh, how could I do this better maybe this way oh no what is this just a second okay anyway so here at the end it would be better to add limit one limit one because that mean, means that if I added limit one at the end of this query it means that uh, it would um, it would ensure that only one record is returned and basically the this is more op this is optimal way how to select um, SQL uh, queries because basically if I don't add it limit one, it will keep looking for player name even though there is no second player like that. So if I just find any player like that, it should return it. Um, then, then here always, this is uh, something that you should do always for any kind of web forms or, or any kind of like um, data uh, passing where there is a strings which user enters there should be uh, some kind of uh, trim. So basically you should add name. Oh, seriously, you didn't see that. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you Everts for letting me know. Again, so to repeat, at the end of the query, there should be limit one in order to not keep searching for player name, even if the one player is already found. Because it will be go, it will went through all of the table just searching another player with that name. So in here, there would be also nice to trim the values. So it would be name name trim. So basically, if if player enters some spaces around the name, it should also be kind of trimmed together, trimmed off. So that part. Let me add it here. So these are a few comments, but. Let's keep looking. So then this one seems okay. So if it would be possible, probably I'm not sure what there should like just query first, uh, first recurrence, but it's fine. So then prepare set update scores. So if this is existing, then we want to update scores, current timestamp. This is nice way because you could just use, you can just use SQL functions directly without passing the data format from the JavaScript side. And this seems really good way. Uh, in, uh, in other languages, uh, in other, I mean, other databases, you could, you could do the same. So for, light, for SQL Lite, this is done in this way. For Postgres, it's done in this way. So that, that's good. Then where player name, again, we could add here limit one. Basically, it, it would stop looking for other uh, recurrences. So that part. So again, very nicely done that you use the named parameters. If you don't use named parameters, there is a recipe for disaster. So then that is fine. Then there is a run execution, right? Select what is this? Select score. So you, do, you then want to select score. Okay, this could be done smarter way. So instead of doing it twice queries without reason, why not uh, select here also? Uh, um, yeah, why not select here also score ID, comma score 
ID and then update using this score ID. Uh, so basically you would, you would pass then this score ID here and update it here. And then you don't need at all the, the second select. Hopefully you understand that. So this, this is something that when you do the code, you should think about it a little bit. So many uh, unnecessary uh, queries just makes code very slow. So if it's possible, then reduce the number of queries. So it's uh, even it's oft, some, often possible to do multiple types of uh, queries just in one, uh, like in one, one uh, execution. For example, the update part, I could also add at the end um, some, so it's actually, you could have updated directly basically. And if, if it doesn't exist, then it would just fail. So that could be one way. Then there is insert. So this is fine. Right, insert last insert row, fine. Delete, update set is deleted through where the player name, fine. Okay, it looks really good. Let's, let's look about the Axios part. So this is a, the game from previous tutorials, which we did together. So insert score, get scores, right? Insert score. Except you, okay, high scores, get high scores. Mm, okay, I guess it, it's fine, hopefully. So yeah, really good job. So it's except there was one, one redundancy where you like, there was unnecessary SQL call, but otherwise looks good. Okay, so that's a good job. So let's look at Rocket's job work. So it seems like in this mini course, Rocket and Everts is right now the best ones, it seems like. So let's see what we have here. So this was the code get scores, right? Insert score. Ah, this is even better. That is good. I like it. So uh, Rocket remembered to use also check that uh, you should check if it is not deleted. That was forgotten by Everts. So this is really good, good stuff. So uh, this, this was missing, at least as far as I saw in Everts code. <clears throat> so user exists, update, again, the same trick, very good. Again, the same problem. It m could, be, um, could be easier just uh, to select the, uh, the user, uh, the score ID here, and then you would not need even to, to, to check if it's deleted because it's already been uh, verified by first query. But at least you have only three qu queries. Uh, Everts had um, uh, more queries. So here the query, insert. Oh, you made it really nice in this way, so I like it. So basically you did not repeat yourself, just made uh, that uh, pre-processed qu query is then used for the same execution here. So that's really nice, nice way to write it. I like it. So then the lead score, it's, it's not updated. So you did not, oh no, you soft delete, there is one. Okay, great. And you also updated the modified, which is good. I think I did not see that in Everts code, but let me check. Did Everts also the updated modified? Nope, he did not. So great job. So I would say, like if, if I compare both of those works, so just from the backend perspective, the um, Rocket's work is more precise, but Everts did uh, also the front end integration, so that's good. So I, I think you, both of you uh, did, did this well, except I see in the chat that you only did this two hours ago, which, which is not super great. But uh, of course I understand the, that um, that we have a lot of responsibilities, right? So, but good, good job anyways. Uh, so that's, that's good. Okay, so let's, let's keep digging in into the code. 
So here I have the uh, backend for the today's tutorial, backend 10, I sent you the zip file. So if you update, if you uh, unload the zip file, right? Un like um, unzip, right? So then if you go inside the, this, uh, this path, so you can get there by using CD, then backend tutorial, and then I install npm, I install all of the modules. Later you can delete those uh, node modules. Uh, so just, just keep some code as an example, so you can know better how to code. By the way, next, next week we will start a an, an new cycle of the uh, of, with a new game. So hopefully with the next cycle, uh, like at least those of you like Everts and, and Rohit who is doing very well will be, uh, like, will be able to work like geniuses, right? Uh, have it all very fast, fast done and without mistakes and will help others. And then some which, which have more difficulties in this mini course will be able to catch up with uh, some of the problems. And, that, and in one moment, if you feel that you know absolutely everything that I am uh, sharing, then you just please write to me directly in Telegram and, and we, we can uh, arrange some next steps. So uh, this is this. Okay, so this was the, the, the game structure as before, uh, without all of the, those additions which I requested. So, <clears throat> okay, so let's, let's, let's talk about, let's make a different structure here. So normally you just don't have one uh, table in your database. You normally have a lot of tables in your database. So uh, let me think, maybe you should, I should dr draw a UML diagram or maybe just not, but let's just make it. So here, if I just make a new table and let's call this table uh, uh, players, right? So players and there will be player ID. Again, it's better to have a prefix of the table name in order to um, avoid some SQL uh, and also language issues because ID is a reserved keyword in some languages. So uh, this is then primary key, auto increment, hopefully this is gonna work. So then uh, next one will be player, player name. This again will be varchar. So this means, varchar means a string with have, it can be from zero till 256 uh, length. So it can be also, you can define different length, right? So that is that, then age. So this could be integer. And then we can add is deleted, boolean. Uh, so where is the, okay, so this is, that's actually interesting. So I forgot that maybe, yeah, so byte, I guess. So it might be that um, that light SQL do not have booleans. Uh, maybe I forgot about that. Um, okay, so it can be just integer, I guess. Let me see, can I have a boolean? Yeah, boolean, hopefully it will work. So false, it might, I don't remember exactly, maybe light SQL didn't have the booleans, then we can use just bytes, but we'll see. So then um, modify. Modified, I hope it, okay, now it's correct. So this will be date, uh, yeah, does not support bool, good, date, time. So the uh, nice thing that WebStorm, I think will translate boolean to some kind of, uh, what language we're gonna use, I see in the chat. So I think we, we're gonna, um, uh, we, we, we could, we, I will think about it, but maybe we will start again with Python or maybe uh, we will start with TypeScript. It might be that uh, I will try out TypeScript. It will be very similar to Javas, JavaScript ES6, but uh, a little bit more constrained. So I, I will think about the language. You, you can also write me in, in, the, in the telegram which, which language you prefer for next cycle. So here, uh, current, Timestamp, uh, so this is gonna be this. 
and then I can add created um, date time current timestamp right so this could be our structure of the of the model of the database table I will um, add this also to the jump board so you can check out I will try to execute it maybe there will be some bug okay there is there is they didn't I can remember there was something regarding this thing auto increment and primary key it didn't like something there minty min Integer. I think I you should need to write the full integer, then it accepts it. If I just write it int, it doesn't work, I guess. Yeah. So with full integer it worked. So here it converted. It actually shows that the bool bool column exists. So maybe uh, light SQL does have bool. Let's see. So if I add here some test player by the way I will just drop it here in the jump board oh, where is where was my stuff okay will it copy here yes so this is this was the the structure so here let's see so evolts maybe two is deleted false um, default default render so yeah we don't have real booleans we only have uh, bytes so that uh, the now it just converted to integers here so it's it's fine it's fine but but uh, it, you must be aware that uh, some databases uh, do not have all of the data types you would prefer but we can still work with them so this is one let's add some other here so john so with the layoff peter this will be, I don't know, 25 is deleted out again, zero. So I have two, two, two players here, okay? So these are two players, player ID one and ID two. So I'll drop also these inside here. So we have one table, which, which will be then linked to with another tables. So players, and then let's add also another one which will be sessions so tables table add new table sessions so we could imagine that in one session in in one session you could have probably multiple scores registered <coughs> so it, it it depends on the way how it's done basically <coughs> Maybe if you if you start session, and um, and session is then linked with a user ID, and then if you allow uh, multiple scores per user, then uh, then one session could have multiple scores. So it depends on this the way how the logic is thought through. So session session ID, again this should be integer integer auto increment primary key uh, then we could write here which 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 player uh, uses this session so there we could write player id and then we could write <coughs> started uh, date time current uh, current timestamp and then ended and ended. Uh, yep, ended, and this will be daytime date by null. So date time. So this will be null value by default. Okay, so this could be then. Uh, yeah, so this could be then session structure. Okay, so this will be session structure. And <clears throat> here we will start using foreign keys. So here, if I look at foreign keys, by the way, it will generate always this S nice SQL code. So SQL code is much better way to understand how everything works in the database. And also it's more portable. So 
uh, you should check out what is generating as well. So here, if I'm trying to now connect this table to another existing table, so I say target table will be the players, and then the, uh, so it will be connecting from player ID to player ID. So this will happen here. I will also add this part. So, and the foreign keys are one way how to optimize selections in queries and also make sure that you don't make them wrong because it will always be linked together with the exact number. So if uh, in one table you have player ID, uh, like I have one and two, and then I would like to uh, link it together with player ID three, which does not exist, there will be an error. So it will be a way how to make sure that everything is linked together correctly. So now if I press OK, <clears throat> it should create the foreign key. So let me see. Where is the sessions, it's columns, and you see this is a blue key here. So it means that this is a foreign key connected. So I have a users connected with the sessions, and now let's con <coughs> connect it with the scores. So I will modify this table. I will add the, uh, so I will add the uh, session, session ID and uh, this will also be a foreign key target will be session and here this will be session id so i'm adding a new column session id and i'm using foreign keys to connect it with sessions so i got it here as well the blue session id key oh sorry Okay, I have, uh, I got some, some messages, so, okay, let's see. So I have this part. Mm -hmm. Players, players, uh, so, okay, so I will just copy this, this structure and then I will look for, and I know that a Jumbo, uh, that um, Pipestorm have really nice features where I can extract the database structure as some diagram would be great. So in Jamboard you see all of these things. <clears throat> Just a second. So I will w wait for you to catch up as well. second uh, so you see in the Jamboard uh, in the Jamboard this thing okay it seems like that rocket is signaling that it's done so let, let's ask others as well okay so let's write here in the chat so uh, is a data base struct structure done plus minus I see I guess the Everts is also done and and Zap is also done so that's great um, just a second I'm just looking I know that there was a diagram visualization right I got the visualization so that's great so I will share also visualization from the web storm to the uh, job board. So UML looks something like this. <clears throat> so you see that we have the player. Uh, oops, <laughs> that was not what I expected. Just a second. 
So we have the player, then we have the session, which is, uh, which is to connect with the player, and then this course is uh, connect with session. So it means that the uh, one player can have many sessions and many and one session can have many scores. So it could be also linked in other ways and also there is no limit. I mean, you can have uh, multiple keys here. For example, we could have another table which would be called game and then we can link game table to the sessions table, right? So it's, it's not limited in, in any way. So that is that part. So we have the, uh, the players. Uh, just a second. Okay, so let's let's then go to the uh, code back. Where is my code? Okay, right, sixteen, right. So then, then if I added the players, right. So that's good. So then we could create something else. So get scores, insert score. Mm -hmm. So we could create uh, some function, um, insert um, start session and end session probably, but uh, I will not try to uh, bother you with that, I think. Otherwise it'll just take too, too long. So I just want to look more at the actually selection of the data. Um, so the insertion, insertion of the data is exactly like this. You would just insert it one by one. So let's, let's, let's just uh, add some, uh, some dummy data. So here there is the sessions, and then there will be scores. I already have the scores, which are not linked with the sessions. So let's add some sessions here. Oh, by the way, in the uh, scores table, now we should remove the uh, player name. Oh man, seriously, we have again some attacks here. Uh, how to do this? Report. Okay, so hopefully I, I will get rid of those bots. <clears throat> anyway, somebody could report it, thank you. So uh, here we should rem re remove, so again, again, full screen. So remove the player, player name from this because player name is not necessary anymore. Um, so then mm, we could add anything else there, but let, let's keep it as that. So that part, so just remove player name from the scores. Then uh, for the tables, I just want to create a new diagram. Okay, so this is the tables diagram. I will update the jump board and please add some dummy data. I will do this myself as well, just in a second. So the main purpose of this session is to just introduce you with the relational databases, which are the uh, ways how we connect and structure all of our data. And also to show you uh, the uh, joins. So there are very specific types of queries which can be used to select out all sorts of things from your database, which are joined together using foreign keys. So uh, let's add some uh, dummy data. So I have player ID one and player ID two. So there will be player ID one. Uh, so I think these fields are not important in this, this moment. Uh, so I add plus player ID one plus, so there will be two sessions for player one and two sessions for player two. Then I update it, so I have all of these things ready. So I have two sessions for player one, two sessions for player two. If I try to enter here player three, it should be should have an error here. Oh, it didn't have an error. Interesting. Oh boy, player ID. Right, maybe I did not add some constraint there. So let me see. So I'll try to remove player ID three. Sessions. Why didn't I have an error? Modify table, keys, primary key. No, not primary, foreign key. Mm -mm. Update rule, no action. Okay, I guess if I add here some uh, restrictions, then there would be an error. Uh, target, delete, update. 
restrict, I guess. Delete, restrict, let's see if that helps. So you added two restrictions. So if I now try to add player three, it still works. <laughs> Anyways, maybe it's something related uh, to light SQL because uh, normally in the other databases, uh, you would not, uh, if you add uh, constraints to your foreign keys, you would not be able to add uh, non-existing player IDs here. But anyways, so this works for some reason. Okay, so the players we have, the sessions we have, maybe I should just uh, post all of these so that you can follow up later. So you, can, you should fill with some dummy data, right? So we can, we can test out some queries. So, uh, so this part. <coughs> Again, you already know how to make queries using the uh, uh, JavaScript uh, with, with these libraries, which we just checked. Uh, but um, so in this today, we just look at we will just look at uh, raw SQL, which you can then later convert to uh, queries using the uh, JavaScript libraries. So uh, this is then the the okay the scores is, looks actually like this. Okay, we did not refresh it, which is. Okay, and I also need to add the the uh, ID. So okay, so this will be session one. So this will be, this will be session two. This will be session three. Then we will add session four, which will will add let's say eight hundred points. This will be session four. Update everything fine. So this will be four data points in our database. Mm -hmm. So this is this. And then finally, we have the, um, uh, what we have, so the sessions, scores, and players. So everything is linked actually. Two players, four sessions, and four scores, but we could add more scores, so let's add more. So <coughs> let's add a few sessions that have more scores. So session number four and session number three will have extra scores here, 900 and 850, for example. Okay, so this will be better. Great. So we have six uh, score, uh, score records. Mm -hmm. So scores, and then I'm missing the sessions table. So now you have uh, three tables filled with dummy data. You can fill it as you wish, just only make sure that the uh, numbers, actually the IDs uh, are re like real ones. So I don't know, what, for, my, for some reason my, uh, my constraints did not work, but basically you must need to check that the player ID is the, the correct player ID in the sessions table. And in the scores, you have a correct session ID to the sessions table. So I have one, two, three, four sessions, and then we have also four here. So that's great. So that is that part. Um, let me just check. So, so let's try then to write some queries now, and I will introduce you uh, with the um, SQL uh, selects, uh, the, the joins. I actually have really nice picture which I wanted to share. I found it some time ago, probably easy to find on the internet anyways, but I would really, really like it. So just a second, where is the jump board? Is it? So, yep. So there are different types of joins which you can do. So uh, it basically, what if you imagine that you have two tables and you have foreign key which is shared between those two tables. So the most common is this one. So this means that I want to link together um, two uh, sets of data where they, where they overlap with that, uh, that uh, uh, value of the key. So if I have the users and sessions and then where they both match the <coughs> user ID, this will be this part. We can also have all sorts of different other types of, uh, of the, um, the joins, for example, in the places where, where it doesn't match, 
like some part where, where it's re really useful when you are trying to build more complicated queries where you want uh, to analyze your data. So th this kind of uh, like graph of, uh, of, of how you can um, join together two tables using foreign keys is really valuable. You can also see that in cases when you want to join something together where it does not exist, then the key value will be null. So if the key value is null, then there is no connection between those two tables. So you can then choose different ways how you can connect, uh, select those, those overlaps using either using a null or not using a null. So that's one way. Another way is that there is the left join and right join. And then there is of course inner join. And there is outer join as well, but basically the left, uh, right and inner is, is common. So the, it just means that uh, on the left join, you have the uh, uh, first table from from, set, from statement. And here you have the second table from the join statement as the main table which you wanna link together. So you should look at this a little bit more and play around later. So that is that. Then uh, let's, let's move to the code. Uh, okay, so if I go into the um, WebStorm and here if I press on the upper part, there is this QL button. And if I open the default, default console, I get this SQL console where I can make a queries to the, um, to the uh, database that I just created. I will also add in the Jamboard uh, the just uh, the place where you can find this uh, panel. So just a second. And this is a good way to test out your queries before you implement them in JavaScript, basically, or in other, uh, other, any other language that you want to use here. So let's try to uh, connect together some selection where we can, where we want to select the, uh, the high score uh, for, for each player. So let's start by just one very easy one where we just select, just co connect everything, uh, everything together. So select, uh, so let's see, select, um, uh, so this would be scores. Uh, it also gives me these, these autocomplete, which is good. So scores, um, there we will write the score. So this is what we will select here. We could actually select the score ID just to make sure that everything works correctly. From, uh, so the score, as soon as you start working with multiple uh, joins, it's always uh, either you need to have aliases to your, your tables or you can just use table name as a prefix to make sure that everything works. So otherwise it will not work because it will not know in which table should I look for these things here. So then this is that. That inner join, it actually gives me the auto completes to, uh, let me show you, um, with, with all of these options. So that's why it's really nice to use WebStorm. So inner join. So it says maybe I should want to uh, auto, uh, con I should, maybe I should want to join the uh, sessions or players with the scores. So let's see, so first let's connect sessions. So this will be sessions on uh, where there is the scores and sessions ID matches like that. So now I've just connected the uh, sessions the table with my scores table. So that means that I can here uh, also add information about sessions session ID, for example, and sessions uh, started. So I can add this information from a different table, which is linked with the session ID key. So we could actually start trying to uh, execute this and see what we get. So if I run it, I see all of this stuff happening that it's wor working uh, nicely. So then the next thing is I wanna join the players so the players on uh, the player, players, player ID linked together with sessions, player ID. 
So now I've chained together even three, uh, three different tables. So here I will write players, player name, like that. I could also add the player ID. Uh, where is the, so just to make sure that everything works. So now if I run it, I got all of my uh, data, which I basically have in the databases, the sessions uh, and the uh, six scores that I have there. So that's great. So now if I want to select just the high scores, so I could then group them. Uh, so um, I could add, so basically before, before grouping, make sure that you can write this query yourself. Um, maybe I should add, so at the end, if you want to add some, some conditions, you could add here where, for example, let me see what kind of condition I could add here, is that scores, uh, score is larger than zero. So this will be true for all of the scores. So you can add some condition at the end here. This will be condition. This will be our first query, which you can test out yourself as well. And now uh, if I want to do some more interesting stuff like grouping and uh, getting some uh, automatic like uh, extraction of the highest score, so we can uh, add something else on top of this. So group by, uh, so let's see, players, player ID. So I want, this will be my key of which I want to group stuff. Uh, so this will be this. Then I will need to delete uh, some some parts of this because it will not be uh, possible to automatically aggregate data. So here I can then write max, if I remember, or maximum. Yeah, max I think will work. So scores, score, right, like that. And it should produce the list of, yeah, so you see that now I've selected uh, grouped together all of my previous data, which I just showed you with all those six uh, rows by the player ID and then selected maximum score of each of those um, uh, groups. So if I have now two groups, I selected the maximum score of those. Then you also notice that the column name now is really inconvenient. It is just like a max with the uh, parentheses. So instead we can use as, let's say max score, and now you will have much nicer column name that you can use in, in the code. So this is one. So this is the way you can aggregate stuff. You can also add here probably player name directly. It might, might be necessary to group by this though. So player name. So probably I will then need to group by player name like that. Uh, sorry, like that. Yeah, so now I have player name and max score. Uh, also notice that the uh, max score is not now sorted in a correct manner. So we can just add here order, order by uh, so this will be then max score, the new variable which I defined as up there this, in descending order. So I can now just uh, order this very nicely. So this works. Uh, so please try to experiment also with these things a little bit. So uh, this is one way how it's very useful to connect a relational databases and you can already see that then you can do all sorts of uh, joins and grouping together these things. Um, then you can of course like calculate average, right? The average score. Right, you can also uh, for example group multiple things together. Okay, I see that Rohit, I guess, is done. So then you can group, for example, not only player names, but let's try to group also sessions, for example. Then the session, 
session ID. And now we will see what is the average score for each player at each session, for example. Now we see that uh, there is different kind of sessions here. Uh, one, two, three, four, and then what is the average score on those sessions? for each player separately, basically. Um, yeah, so you can do have multiple uh, ways how to group this. So this is this, what else we can do? Mm -hmm. Okay, and we could per maybe group here, not group, but order here, first of all, by the name. So let's say order by the name and then uh, order by the score. So if I run it again, you see that, uh, so for player one, there is the top score and then the second uh, second best, uh, second average um, best score for the session and then for the uh, second player as well. So you see that you can do a lot of things regarding with, with these um, um, ways, how you can connect your, your your tables together and create a uh, much, much more um, expressive uh, databases with structures. Mm. So of course, this example, which I just showed you is, is not, not like, uh, not something we would need for this game, but, but this would be necessary definitely if, if you would work on some commercial projects, like, like you can imagine that if you have uh, some content management system where you have different uh, pages and each page have different translations, for example, and each page has different categories, right? And tags and uh, each page is edited by different user and each user um, have sessions. So there's a lot of things you can um, connect together in database using foreign keys. Maybe the last thing which I want just to discuss is that uh, if I'm doing some kind of selection, so here I'm selecting by the score, for example, uh, so this is that. So the score selection would not help a lot, but if I would for some reason, I don't know, let's see. So if I have players here and then there is the age here, if for some reason I would use some direct, uh, direct selection. So here and uh, players age equals, not greater or smaller, but equals to something like 25. So it works also with strings. So if I'm using some kind of equal equation here uh, for the selections, and if I'm repeating this many times, then there is a way how to improve this, uh, this query. So especially if it's not used together with other, uh, with other kind of queries, but most of the modern databases are smart enough to understand that they can split uh, the conditions in multiple parts. But basically, if we had just like that, this would be really clean way. So basically, if I'm always running this query, I always get the same results. And it doesn't make sense for database to always look for the same results every time when I run this query, if it already knows that there is nothing has been changed since the last time I asked database this query. So the way how to do this optimally is to have a modified table here and add index. So I can add index here. There are different things. So first of all, you can add unique index, which means that it will throw an error if I try to enter, for example, the same username or something like that. But I can add also other indexes, like in this case, if I add here the age, here uh, there is even option for sorting. It can also store probably sorting uh, indexes. So it makes a hash basically in database, some kind of um, very easily comparable uh, uh, data that I can then um, use to extract pre-computed uh, selections from databases, which work a lot faster than, uh, than every time I would do this for first time. So there's also, yeah, if I run it now, so it will add this small flag here, which is uh, that this is a um, index now. And if I run this first time, it will should run uh, slower than if I run it the second and, and the following times. I don't think it will ha matter much for this uh, dummy database, but we'll see. So 
if I try to run it. Uh, so this was 97 milliseconds. Try to run it again. The next one is uh, 49 milliseconds, twice, twice as fast. Next time, 50 milliseconds, okay. 37 milliseconds, so it's a little bit random. But uh, if that would be uh, like a large database, you would definitely feel effect of repeating queries uh, that are indexed. So especially if you have large databases, you should definitely look at the uh, indexes. And you can also have indexes not only for just one column, but you can have, you can add multiple column combinations like if I'm always selecting age together with player ID, for example, in this case, actually I'm doing this. Uh, so let's see so if I add index for also for player ID together. So this is a joint index now. So this is a player ID uh, with the age. And then I, if I try to run it, so this is actually player name as well selected here. Maybe I could replace it to player ID to make it uh, just in the in the realm of of this this query. So let's see if I can get some difference, but I doubt because it's really small query. Yeah, it doesn't change. But anyway, so uh, I hope this is clear, so that you can add the indexes to so the, in this case this thing. And, uh, and the player ID together in, as the index to optimize the requests. But the only thing is that you need to remember that this must be equal uh, equation. So if they're equal in the end, if there is something like um, larger or smaller than something, then it's not possible to hash that kind of query and uh, uh, that will not be indexed. Okay, so I see, I guess that Rocket is, is done with these things as well. Okay, so I think that's about it for today. Uh, the, um, uh, I will think if, if I can think of some homework regarding these things, but I saw that in the, um, uh, the voting for the next uh, cycle of game, uh, you, you voted primarily for a helicopter game for the, uh, and for the Flappy Bird game, right? So we will probably build that one. Uh, just a second, I will show you what it is. So, I, I guess you already looked at that that um, that, that those games which uh, which I offered to develop. Okay, let me share the screen. Uh, so we will build something like this. Uh, so this is a pixel helicopter or I think this was like a very old game where you just need to click uh, all so that uh, this uh, this helicopter do not fall uh, if you don't click anything it just falls down it's basically the same thing as a flappy bird so that idea is, has been already for a long time we will build a game like that um, next time and hopefully that will help as well for for people who were struggling at the end of this uh, cycle um, yeah, so that's it for today. Great that you joined and